Who wants to do a keto and intermittent fasting plan with me to get in the best shape of their life for summer? Okay, this plan is all about getting lean in a relatively short amount of time, but doing it the healthy way. Okay, so we're gonna go over everything. This whole challenge is going to go from May 1st to May 31st. However, full disclaimer, if you're visiting this video later on, the plan still works and the live broadcast and everything is still going to be active. This is just for the current subscribers that wanna take part in this right now for May, here you go. Otherwise, it's all good. Now this whole plan is modeled after a little experiment that I did back in February, where I learned, well, if I fluctuate high fat with low fat days, but still keep my calories relatively the same, I had amazing results. Take a look at my three week transformation picture right here. All right, so everyone wanted a challenge. So let's go ahead and have some fun with this. So what this is, is it's gonna be three different days. We're gonna have a standard keto day, then we're gonna have a high protein, low fat day, where the calories are still going to be about the same, it's just macronutrients are going to be skewed towards protein and then we have an intermittent fasting day that's going to happen right after the high protein low fat day so we'll explain it so i know it sounds complicated but when it's broken down it's actually very 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 simple i will be doing live broadcasts for coaching quick reminder this video was filmed before everything happened with the pandemic so originally this was going to go out for the summer, but we had to bump everything back and we wanted to do it at a strategic time when people are ready to make a change with their life. So this challenge now starts from October 1st through the end of October, and there's going to be live broadcasts every Monday during the month of October. So that way you can interact with me and ask me questions, things like that. So disregard the dates that are on the whiteboard. Okay, this is real, this is authentic, hiccups happen, craziness, pandemics happen. So anyhow, Enjoy the challenge. I'm excited to do these live broadcasts with you and let's rock and roll. Now, full disclaimer, I have my second kiddo being born in May. So there's a chance that we might have to just massage those dates a little bit, but I'll make sure I let everyone know. If you're watching this video later on, then these live broadcasts are gonna be posted down in the description below so you can still watch them. ButcherBox is going to be offering a special discount for anyone that is taking part in this challenge. That means you can get your grass-fed, grass-finished meat, you can get your chicken, you can get your salmon, you can get your scallops and all that stuff delivered right to your doorstep at a much better price than most grocery stores. So they're sponsoring this whole challenge, so super big shout out to them and make sure you check them out. There's a link down below that's gonna save you some money and also get you some special add-ons. So make sure you check them out after we go through everything here. You'll be able to provide all the meat for this whole, whole challenge here. I also linked out to a private Facebook group that I've used for other challenges. This way you can have some banter, you can have some interaction, I'll hop in there from live to time. So there's a link to a Facebook group. I know not everyone has Facebook, but it makes it so it's interactive and so we get a nice just group of people in here that we can all talk about and we can all complain about what we're suffering through and we can all talk about our wins. So make sure you join that group too so you can be a part of it. It's totally free, it's just so that we can engage together. So what we have here, just to give you before we get into the exact foods, we have a standard keto day, which is going to be relatively high fat, moderate protein, and a good amount of veggies, okay? Then two days per week, we're gonna do a high protein, low fat day. I do not want these days consecutive, okay? So a good rule of thumb would be to do your high protein day on a Monday and a Thursday, but you can juggle it. I just don't want them back to back. I want your intermittent fasting day to immediately follow whatever high protein, low fat day you do. So for example, if your high protein, low fat day falls on Monday, your intermittent fasting day should fall on Tuesday. If it falls on Thursday, your intermittent fasting day should be on Friday. There's a strategic reason for that to help you activate specific receptor proteins that can potentially help you utilize more fat. This is what I discovered in my challenge myself. All right, so let's just go through this pretty smoothly and quick. Uh, standard keto day, your breakfast is going to be coffee or tea with one tablespoon of ghee. Ghee is going to help support the gut. That is what we want, to feed those gut cells. I love the taste of ghee and coffee and tea. Uh, you can use coconut oil as an alternative. I want you to eat two whole eggs, okay? Now, if you like smoked salmon, if you like lox, I would love for you to add two ounces of good quality lox, not Norwegian, okay? That stuff has a lot of uh, contaminants in it. Okay, so go for whatever you can. Go for the sake if you can. You don't have to, it's just optional. And then half of a medium avocado, so we get that oleic acid, which activates, again, PPAR alpha, basically this downstream pathway to help your body utilize more fat via oleoethanolamine from uh, oleic acid. Complicated jargon, we'll talk about it later. Lunch, 
six ounces of lean ground beef. Okay, that's the nice thing about Butcher Box is their meat is pretty lean, so you can go with that or go to the grocery store, whatever you want to do. Six ounces of lean ground beef, make a burger, or you can substitute ground turkey if you want to go for that. You're just making a burger. Then I want one cup of either broccoli, asparagus, or Brussels sprouts. That's one cup measured cooked. Okay, I want it steamed if you can. If you have to bake it, grill it, that's fine too, but I prefer it steamed. Then I want two tablespoons of olive oil drizzled on the veggies or two tablespoons of mayonnaise, if you like mayonnaise, put on top of the burger. Okay, so you see we're getting our fats in here and we're trying to prime our body with a lot of fats and then when we go to the high protein, low fat day, we're gonna take the fats away so the body has no choice but to burn our stored fat tissue. Okay, then I want one ounce of goat cheese or feta, okay? Goat cheese and feta is just less impactful on your body from an inflammatory standpoint. It's more of what is called A2 casein proteins. Not gonna waste the time here. It's just a healthier cheese option. You can go with regular cheese if you wish and if you're used to it, but I strongly prefer this. Then one tablespoon of coconut butter. Coconut butter is not coconut oil. It's like peanut butter, almond butter, sunflower butter, except it's made from coconuts and it is so dang good. And this serves as your treat. I want this one tablespoon of coconut butter to be like your dessert after lunch. So good, so high in fat, the good lauric acid kind of fats. Then with dinner, six ounces of shrimp or scallops or last option, lean chicken. I want shrimp or scallops, but I know everyone isn't gonna always agree with me there. Very easy to digest, okay? It lacks some of the connective tissue that normally makes protein harder to physically digest. So you assimilate potentially more of that protein. So I highly recommend that. Otherwise, a lean chicken breast would do, okay? Very, very good. Again, you can get that through Butcher Box or just go from some uh, organic chicken breast at your local grocery store. Then I want you to consume one of my most favorite things, which is asparagus. I want you to have anywhere from six to 15 stalks of asparagus, and I want you to add a little bit of avocado oil, just a tablespoon or two, just to drizzle it on there, and try adding nutritional yeast to this. Take a look at the little clip with my asparagus and nutritional yeast. It is delicious. You put a little bit of salt on it, really is something that satiates you and gets you your B vitamins in. Uh, two tablespoons of ghee, on top of your protein. So what I recommend with your shrimp or scallops is you're almost making like a butter sauce. You take that two tablespoons of ghee, you can add some oregano, you can add some salt, pepper, make a butter sauce with it, and also get your good fats in. And lastly, one ounce of macadamia nuts. Full disclaimer, all these numbers can be reduced or expanded depending on how much you normally eat. I just wanted to set a basic baseline. This is similar to what I would consume. Okay, you can reduce or expand. I just want the ratios to stay the same. For example, if you normally have six ounces of lean ground beef, and you want to increase it to eight ounces, you, that would be a 25% increase. So I want you to just increase everything accordingly. Supplements, fish oil, good quality fish oil. I can't tell you how much because it's going to vary on the person, but I recommend at least a few capsules. Uh, probably about four to 500 milligrams of good quality magnesium and about 300 milligrams of a good quality coenzyme Q10 to help with energy metabolism and ketosis. Now let's move in to the fun thing. High protein, low fat day. This is where the calories ultimately stay close to the same, but you will burn more fat and you will get in shape for summer because it is powerful, powerful, powerful. So breakfast, you're gonna seem like you're eating a lot of food here. Six to 10 ounces, depending on this person, the size of the person. Lean chicken, either ground or breast. I know that seems odd for breakfast, but it's just two days a week. If I told you eating this two days a week would help you lose a lot of fat, would you do it? I'm sure you would. Uh, optional, if you want to reduce the amount of chicken, you can do uh, like a few ounces of chicken and some egg whites. I normally don't recommend egg whites. However, I understand I'd rather you do egg whites and chicken than just skip this all together. One and a half cups of spinach wilted with apple cider vinegar. You can just throw it in a saucepan with a little teeny, teeny, teeny bit of oil to wilt it and then add a couple tablespoons of apple cider vinegar just to mix it up. It tastes really, really good. Uh, if you're training, if you're doing a lot of weight training, feel free to add a scoop of protein powder with some almond milk or excuse me, a half a scoop of protein powder with some almond milk just to get a little bit more protein in. The goal is we're reducing fat calories, so we want to make sure we're making them up with protein calories. Okay, moving into lunch. Still a lot of protein here. 10 to 12 ounces of lean meat or steak. I would usually recommend here, if you can, filet. I know it's a little bit more expensive, but it is lean. Flank steak, something like that, or very lean ground beef, lean burger. But you're going 10 to 12 ounces, a good amount here. Two cups of veggies. We're increasing veggies dramatically to keep you full, but also because the veggies inside your gut, the fiber gets broken down into butyrate, which is very, very similar to the ketone that we're trying to get, beta hydroxy butyrate. 
Molecularly, very similar, i.e. more veggies could potentially help us get more ketones, which helps us burn more fat without having to add more fat in, right? Two tablespoons of olive oil on the veggies. Just because it's low fat doesn't mean I don't add some fat in, okay? I still want some fat in there, and olive oil activates so many thermogenic properties, we might as well do it. If you enjoy them, don't close out this video simply because you don't like this. I had them in my experiment, so why not throw them in? One can of oysters in olive oil, but I drained and rinsed them. I like the oysters because of the zinc, okay? Helps out the thyroid, just good, and quite honestly, I enjoy them, so by all means. Midday, mid p.m., between lunch and dinner, this is the only time I would ever recommend having a snack, and it's on this day. 30 to 50 gram pea or whey isolate protein shake. Okay, mix that up with almond milk. So 30 to 50 grams of protein coming in there. Yes, we're keeping protein high, but we have to do that to keep our calories where we want them so we're not dropping them too much. And then dinner time, this is where we get to have some fun. 10 to 12 ounces again of a filet, flank steak, or sockeye salmon, which you think is a fatty fish, and it is, but it's actually pretty lean. Okay, you're only talking a few grams of fat there. And then, or scallops, okay? Now that'd be a lot of ounces worth of scallops, so I understand if you don't wanna do that. One tablespoon ghee to make a butter sauce, but then also one tablespoon of heavy cream to make a butter sauce. So you mix the ghee and the cream, make yourself a butter sauce, just melt it down. I even, you can even use the microwave if you want, and then add some spices, add some garlic, add some uh, whatever you want in there to make like a butter sauce. Again, we're adding most of the fats at dinner time, the rest of the day keeping it pretty lean. Asparagus uh, or another prebiotic veggie. Okay, so what I mean by that is asparagus, artichoke, um, even onions, to be completely honest, but you can look up what prebiotic veggie you want the most. And then after dinner, before bed, optional, you can do six ounces of yogurt plus a scoop of pea protein to get your protein up more. Totally optional if you feel like you need it. Supplements, the same as your regular keto day, except because you're having so much protein, I would recommend adding some enzymes or your favorite probiotic in there. I'm not gonna give you uh, brand names or anything like that, you just use your judgment there. Now, the intermittent fasting day. This is where you're probably gonna have the most fat burning. So this column here primes you and gets you ready to burn fat. This high protein, low fat day kickstarts the enzymatic and the actual cellular processes, and this day burns the fat itself, okay? So for the morning, in your intermittent fasting day, you're gonna wake up, and I prefer that you work out fasted. But on this day, no need to do heavy weight training if you don't want to, just do some cardio. You're already activating fat burning processes, so just go do cardio and you're good to go. 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever, whatever you feel like doing, and then just have some fun with that. Post-workout, you don't need to have your food. You stay fasted. Coffee and tea is okay as long as it's black and no sweeteners and no creamers at all. Magnesium is okay if you're feeling weak. If you're starting to feel like, ah, oh, dang, I don't have energy, take a couple hundred milligrams of magnesium uh, malate or dimagnesium malate. Salt water, simple. Water with a little bit of pink Himalayan salt or Redmond Real Salt. In the morning, it's okay to have apple cider vinegar plus a little bit of lemon juice and a little bit of cayenne to kickstart thermogenic processes and kickstart the digestive system a little bit. And I want you to practice lowering your cortisol before breaking a fast. What that means is, taking five minutes to do some deep breathing before breaking a fast so that you bring hormone values down that would normally cause you to store the meal that you're about to eat. Separate side note, and I have a separate video for intermittent fasting and building muscle, so I won't spend a lot of time, but if you're working on building muscle, try working out at the end of your fast versus first thing in the morning. Okay, work out at the end of your fast and then break your fast. Then when it comes time to break your fast, eight ounces of bone broth would be ideal. You don't have to, but it helps get the gut prepared. Then your first meal, six to eight ounces of lean. Lean, 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 as lean as possible. Repeat, as lean as possible. Fish, chicken, or worst case scenario, a shake if you're on the run. I would prefer pea protein shake over whey protein shake at this point in time because your body's sensitive and I don't want the inflammatory compounds coming in from the whey. Optional, you can do a five ounce red potato. I know that's not keto, but what it's gonna do at the end of the fast is it is going to allow that protein to get into storage a little bit better. And I promise it might kick you out of keto for like 30 minutes, but then you'll be back in it. It's something that I would typically do. Then one to four hours later, depending on how long you fast, I recommend fasting for 16 hours minimum, okay? So you're gonna take the time that you finished your last meal and go 16 hours and then break your fast. But you can go all the way up to 20 or 22 if you wish. Then what you're gonna do is your dinner. 
five to eight ounces of a regular meat. This is your time to enjoy a fattier cut of meat. If you wanna have a ribeye, or if you wanna have a New York steak, or if you wanna have a juicier burger, this is your time. That's why the protein count is a little lower because we're getting some more calories from the fats. I normally don't want fatty cuts of meat. I normally want the fats coming in from other sources, but in this case, you've been fasting. Enjoy the good meat, okay? But I do want you to practice cooking it in some avocado oil or ghee. If you're pan searing it or pan cooking it, put some ghee or avocado oil in there and it will help protect you from the carcinogenic compounds that form when you heat meat to a high degree. It makes a big difference, especially with ghee. Then two ounces, yes, two ounces, that's a good amount of cheese. I don't care what cheese you use, to be honest, but again, my recommendation is always gonna be goat or feta. Try to go for good, clean quality cheese, not low quality fake cheddar, okay? One to two cups of veggies, of your choice, as long as they're not high carb, with a drizzle of toasted sesame oil. This stuff is dirt cheap and it is a hidden gem. Okay? Recent science is finding that the polyunsaturated fats in sesame oil are protected by very unique compounds in the sesame oil itself. Okay, they're called sesamin and sesamol. And toasted sesame has another one called sesamolin. Nerd explosion, right? Okay, but that nerd explosion yields some really cool results. It makes it so that the good quality polyunsaturated fats remain stable. Anyhow, I digress. Then before bed, optional shake. Again, if we wanna get more protein, this would be applicable if you're doing a lot of weight training. Um, and then supplements, the same as keto day except I want you to double the amount of fish oil you're taking because I want to really quell inflammation levels, okay? Then you just go right back into standard keto day and you get your nice little sequence going, okay? A nice little routine, you could even go standard keto day, high protein day, intermittent fasting day in that order and just recycle, okay? Really simple. So I'll see you on May 11th. And if you're watching this later, make sure you check out the live broadcast down below. So let's go ahead and let's have some fun with this. And don't forget to get your meat from ButcherBox so that you can save some money and also help support this channel. And I will see you soon in the live broadcast. Let's do this.